Now maybe get a pick six in the flats. We've seen several of those thus far in this tournament. And it will be. Michael Skimbo will bring it out of the end zone here in this semifinal game. It makes a move. Paul Richardson's off to the races at the 30, the 20. Let's they go! won't catch him. Come and on. the opening kickoff goes all the way back to the house. Big thing, man. I never even kick it straight. I never kick it like that. And that was actually Tweez. I never kick it like that, man. Who scored? Wow. Usually it's Skimbo just busting people in the head with special teams, but Tweez comes out wow. with all oh, the man, momentum and fire. Skimbo says, I never kick it straight. And look at the stick work by the young Grizzly Tweez. What a beast. So Skimbo wearing white at home. <laughs> white on the road here. All green is Tweez. And he takes the opening kickoff to the house. We thought it was vintage Michael Skimbo, but it's actually Tweez taking the opening kickoff all the way back, 100 plus yards. And that's rough for Skimbo because he's heard him. The key to the game is Earl and Cam. That means he's expecting to play defense, but you don't even get your defense on the field. You let up a special teams touchdown, which is a big deal when points are hard to come by. Wow, not a way to open up the game if you're Mike Skim back against the wall, but. If anyone's built the fight through adversity, it's Mike Skim. Well, you spot him seven points, and Tweez is a guy you don't need to spot seven points. And Tweez saw something he didn't like there. He was still working through his adjustments in that 3-4 under defense. Wants a bit more time to make those substitutions. Yeah, and hey, why not? You want you got to go. You can't take those timeouts with you in the second half. You're going up against a prolific passer and Mike Skim. You got to make sure everything, all your personnel set, your defense is intact. So it's second and seven. Ball at the 27-yard line for Michael Skimbo. Well, you, you can't afford to spot anybody here in this final four competitors. Any sort of points. This time he finds Tyler Lockett out at the 46 yard line. Nice find there by Skimbo. Yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see on this drive if Tweeds can throw Skimbo off of those timing routes and send some of that heat, like you said in the game plan, and really get the Skimbo's quarterback. It's gonna be interesting. He does a great job of mixing up the pressure from both the right and the left side. Scott Cole and RG with you here in the semifinals, holding it down like two fat kids on a blanket. <laughs> you say pigs on a blanket? <laughs> Second and nine for Skimbo. Of course, we're playing head-to-head -head mode here. This is not salary cap. This is not Mutt Champs. It's the Madden Classic yeah. and head-to-heads. Yeah, this is old school. You fire up the game. You go straight to play now, head-to-head. -head. And you just lock in with your opponent offline. This is what the Madden Classic's all about. Old school Madden sitting next to your opponent on the couch, talking some trash, playing with regular teams, setting your audibles, 40 second play clock. List goes on and on. Wilson scrambling to the right, and he'll just throw this away. It'll be second and 10. So Skimbo on a drive with Tweez after Tweez had returned the opening kickoff. It just felt like vintage Skimbo on that return, but it actually was the stick work of Tweez. I think that's what might have confused us yeah, up yeah. there, but we're so used to seeing Skimbo. Well, we're also used to Skimbo being the higher seed, but he actually had to work his way through the wild card round to get here. Tweez and Dubby were the ones that got the buys coming out of the group stage. Good read. There's Doug Baldwin, almost got away from Earl Thomas. He's down to the 29-yard line. Really needs a touchdown on this drive. Skimbo just prolifically moving this ball like he does, walking up the field. And he's put together prolific drives all tournament long. He is willing to take his checkdowns when necessary. And there is oh, Rome. Try to jerk, juke back inside. 
But that was Sherman out there. That was able to contain him and hold him at the 12-yard line. First and 10 from the 12. And goes back to Rawls. Sherman once again making a nice play. Three tackles already on this opening drive for Richard Sherman. I don't think that's a good thing. Well, a lot of people like to attack the sidelines and the underneath drag routes, and those go, you know, right up into his direction, especially when you turn the ball upfield after the catch. Look at Skim. He's out of the bunch. Second and four. Might be the wham. And he'll put it to the air. Jimmy, high pass. And then it's high pointed and dropped. And that's true. That's the only time we've really seen him come out of the bunch is in this red zone offense where he has the, the opportunity to wham it if he would want to on a running play. But he's really looked for Jimmy Graham on a high point. And running the ball wouldn't be that bad out of this formation. See, he's got three tight ends on the field right there. You can see quickly in the le bottom left-hand corner, those are his audibles. And he does audible to oh! the wham. And C.J. Procise gets in there. And pinning the extra point, we got a tall tie ball game here in the semifinals. And you see Skim's composure after the touchdown. No celebration, dead serious. Look at that face. Look at that focus. He's not messing around. He knows there's nothing to celebrate just yet. Knowing him, he's thinking about this kickoff and how he better not mess it up and give up another one so he can get that defense out on the field. Take a look at it again. Wham! He's not happy, the young Grizzly. So this time he'll angle the kick. The opening kickoff, he kicked it right down Main Street and it got returned. Oh. Boy, Lockett, a couple spin moves there, but just gets to the 23. And the implications for Tweez in this game are huge, Coltrane. Like we talked about, the winner of this match secures their spot in the Madden Ultimate League. However, Tweez, this is his last shot to make it there and definitely secure that spot because he didn't sign up for a club series. Player. He's yep. not grinding the ladder for the Madden Challenge. Nope. This is literally a do or die situation for him. So though this game means a lot to both of them, technically there's more on the line here for Tweez than there is for Skimbo because Skimbo will at least have other chances to make that ultimate league. Tweez is all in on this Madden Classic. Both these guys, one challenger events to get here. Skimbo in New York, Tweez out in El Paso. Second and two. Wilson, like a big green highlighter, runs out to the 40. And how ironic is this? You got a guy in Tweez, a young man who doesn't play a lot online, doesn't grind the ladders, and here he finds himself going up against the defending champion and Michael Skimbo in front of thousands of viewers, a chance to be on the NFL Network. Man, only in competitive gaming, huh? First and 10. Well, the finals are tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 Pacific. Across all of the networks, you've talked about NFL Network, Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Be a lot of Madden heads watching tonight. And Richardson able to pick up seven yards. First pass of the game for Tweez. You can see all the places you can watch the Madden Classic Final tonight. And look at all those outlets <laughs> to watch competitive Madden, huh? Talk about a sport that is rapidly growing, Coltrane. It is a fantastic time to be a part of this community. Didn't see Friendster on there. Is that still around? <laughs> no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Third and two. Might have been before your time, RG. You're, you're too busy playing Madden to know anything about the old school days of social media. Good play. Uh-oh. Boy, he's going to be short here. Ball's going to be marked right at the 50. Oh, they're going to give him the first down. He got the first down. And one thing Woo. I'm noticing about Tweezer's offense here is we said the key to the game for Skimbo was Earl and Cam. 
But Tweed's doing a good job of running the ball and attacking those, throwing it toward the sideline, which is away from the direction of those playmakers, Earl and Cam Chancellor. Stretches it out, and they'll pick up another first down. Boy, it looked like he was short at the 50-yard line. It was close. But they gave him the first down, and then on the next play, stretches it out to the 39-yard line. Skim could have potentially challenged the spot of the ball on that. That is a challengeable play in Madden. Oh, Roll. he's got room! Got a block from his fullback. And that's the thing about Tweez, you haven't seen a lot of them, and then he comes out and he's just awkward formations. I believe every time we've seen him in this strong twin right here, he's run that stretch play, and the hole opens up. You gotta think Skim's ready for it, or he's done his homework knowing that that's coming when you see that formation. I don't think he's shown us another play out of that formation yet. He may just be setting it up. But all we've seen out of that strong twin is the stretch. You saw his recent plays there on the right side of your screen. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Third and one. And oh! there's the heat. A huge sack on third down. That'll make it fourth and seven. And here comes the two-minute warning. Oh, two goons at your quarterback. That's a problem for the offensive line. And but by the way, you enjoyed us skipping halftime last time, holding down A. We're going to do it again for those folks out there watching. We're going to go right to the third quarter. Let's keep the action moving. I like it. Watch out for the block kick here. That's a long field goal. 54 yards for the Blair Witch Project. This is big for Tweez to get these three points. Remember, Skim's been making a living so far in this tournament on defense. But as long as Tweez is able to turn these possessions into points, that's going to be a big thing for him. When I was talking to Young Kiff before the game, that's what he mentioned. He said the key for Tweez is at least making sure he gets points out of every possession. He doesn't need seven. Getting three would be plenty. And he's got it. And takes a three-point lead. And they hold, you know, you hold the snap there. You're like, well, what is he waiting on? Well, you don't want that guy on the outside to be able to tie me up and come in with a big block. Yeah, that, there's a whole strategy behind that where guys feel if they let the clock tick down, they can mess with the timing. Many believe if you let it go at three <laughs> seconds, yeah. There's all types of conspiracy theories about there about counter and block kicks. And but I mean, you, you, these players are, you know, if it, if it works for others and it gets to be the meta, they'll do it. They'll do it. They'll believe in it. And it Superstitious a... Madden players out there. And Rawls tries to juke back for the first down, but only gets to the 34. Still eight yards on first down for Skimbo. It's a big possession for Skim. He's got a minute 40 left. This is probably the last possession of the game if he could put some sort of drive together. And he will get the ball at halftime. So yeah. if he was able to turn this drive into seven, he'd go into the second half of 14 to 10, get involved, which means he's in control of the game. Let's take a look at the way this game started. It was an opening kickoff by Tweez. That's got to be 109 yards here by Paul Richardson. Oh, my goodness. And how about that spin and that stick work going up against the defending champion? That's a way to get those, you know, start of the game jitters out the way, return the kick back to six. Flag. This could be a free play. See if he decides to take a shot up the sideline. Nope. He comes back to the middle to Doug Baldwin. And we're going to have a decision to make here. And it's an easy one. He'll take it at the 47-yard line, 105. And the other thing is with the penalty, <clears throat> you know, he had an opportunity to go deep but decide to a medium pass. I mean, he did his best Aaron Rodgers impression right there. He still got a big chunk right there. It was, it was pretty much a free roll on that play. You, you knew you had the offsides. You don't see that all the time in Madden, but good execution by Skim. So second and 12 for Skimbo, trailing by a field goal. Take a look at these yards. Balance attack for Skimbo, over 100 yards. Tweez hadn't had the ball much with that big return. Wilson got to get rid of a dozen. Come on, man. And there's the key to the game for Tweez. He said, I got to send the goons, G. And that he did right there. Look at that off the right side. We said he mixes up his pressures very well. That's Cliff Averill. 
coming free, and that makes a third and 21. He had the ball at the 47-yard line in plus territory, and now he's got a third and 21 from his own 42 with 47 ticks to go. That was a big sack. Makes the field goal very difficult for Skim. Everything's locked up. He throws it. Punt it, punt it, punt it, punt it, punt it. Call punt for him it, to punt, punt, punt after that punt drop. It, Threw it in coverage. Doug Baldwin couldn't haul, the, Let's get through. haul that one in. And remember, W returned a punt. Skim fact, Skimbo returned a punt against W, who didn't kick out of bounds. Yeah, yeah Skim's going to kick it out of bounds. There's no way he's going to give Tweez a chance to oh, return this ball. No, nah, the, the, oh, God, damn. yeah, there's no way. Now, you heard Tweez. He said, let's go get three, but he needs to be careful. There's only 34 seconds. He only has one timeout. We've seen Skimbo make a ton of plays on defense. He needs to protect this ball more so than anything, in my opinion. He really felt like he should have filled in that punt. Wilson gets loose. Wow, he's got room. He's on his horse. Forced out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Cam Chancellor couldn't chase him down. Lost containment. Look at that shot by the cameraman right there. That's a Madden classic shot right there. Two. Goons on the couch. Two goons on the couch. Madden goons, that is. Look at them. Side by side. Big money on the line. Head-to-head. -head. Madden classic style. Cancels Good the play blocking. action, trying to get out of there. Threw it off his back foot, and he was still inside the tackle box here. If you tweet, I, I think just get out of this half, man. You ought to be careful. You're playing with fire right now. See him go to the run here. Maybe he gets a, a juke here on the stretch. That's a good play call. That's a, oh! And he's going to use a timeout here. So third and 14. I, I think. But Skimbo still has a timeout here. So this is this is an interesting third down here, RG. I think I'm running the ball, making Skimbo use that last timeout of his, and then I'm punting it. I don't think he'd be able to get a field goal. Punting it out of bounds, that is. Out of bounds. Not punting <laughs> it to Skimbo. Out of bounds. Third and 14. Good. It'll stretch it out again and it gets blown up by Cam Chancellor. Skimbo will use his final timeout. And here's an interesting thing. We always talk about the field goal block, but you never see anyone really go for the punt block. Bump Skim, you could assume Tweeds is going to punt this out of bounds, so you just go for the gusto, try to block this kick, make a game change in play. This punt's going to drift a little bit to the right. Oh, he's got He's giving it to him. A lot of room here for Skimbo and Lockett. Can he find a lane? Nice job on the punt coverage there to end the half. And Skimbo trailing by three. We'll get the ball to start the third quarter. As we mentioned earlier, we are holding down A. We are going right through halftime here in the semifinals. In just 10 minutes, it separates Tweez, the youngster from New Orleans I need one. Give me to have the opportunity to be in the finals. What an opportunity that back. would be. 20 years old, that young, making moves. I mean, he's already guaranteed himself $12,500 in this tournament. Winning this game guarantees himself $15,000 for this tournament, but then automatically you're in the Ultimate League. The least you can make out of that $500,000 prize pool is $10,000. And one of the coolest things about the Ultimate League, Scott, that we haven't even talked about, is it's a 10-game season. Yeah. Each win you get in that 10-game season is an extra $1,000 on top of the prize pool. So each game in that season is a minimum of a $1,000 game. That's a really cool opportunity, huh? Stacks on stacks, racks on racks. Just by playing Madden. What a so, time to be alive. <laughs> second and seven. RG put my life in perspective here in the second it's half. High it's snap. Oh. It's usually a delay. It's funny, Skim, Skim trying to rock the same swag he did oh. against Chaos, but Tweez looks like he's a whole nother animal. Hike, he's a touchdown. Oh, no, uh, Tweez is ready for that. 7 of 10, 64 yards for Skimbo. Not the usual numbers you see from him. But he doesn't turn the ball over. We Let's saw him go. have one against Dubby. One more. 
Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, look at that emotion from the young Grizzly Tweez. He's got money on his hat, money on his mind. Yeah, he is a cool cat, too. We've been chilling with him all week. Just calm, cool, and collected. Happy to be here. Focused. I, young Trey Horn. I, this kid is amazing. This is a big play, though, here, Coltrane. Biggest play of the game thus far. Fourth and five. Ball to 34. Skimbo trailing by three here in the first semifinal. He's coming from the right. And Richardson holds on at the 48. And guess who that was on? Earl. <laughs> Look at this on the replay. Throws it, and Earl right there to make the tackle, but not able to make the ball drop loose. Huge play right there by Skim. Play action. Finds Lockett, Lockett picks up the first down and more. Still on his feet, down to the 31 yard line. He was dancing, juking, rumbling, stumbling. Finally, Tweez came out of nowhere, said enough of that, gave him a cut stick, took him out, but the damage was already done. Wilson once again, back to the air. Jimmy Graham's got some space underneath. Well, you had three defenders guarding that corner route, and Jimmy Graham was wide open to the flats. And this is what we love about Mike Skimbo's game. He's willing to take what you give him. There's nobody more prolific right now in the Madden circuit than Mike Skim, and he's showing you why. And he goes to Thomas Rawls there, try to okey-doke him. And a lot of people would be surprised with that. You tell someone, oh, I'm the best Madden player in the world. They're going to expect you to have one play touchdowns all over the place. No, you got to do take what the defense gives you, and that's what being the best Madden player is all about. Goes back to the base run here. Gets to the two-yard line. Boy, somebody missed a big chance at a tackle there in the middle. Let's see. Yeah, Skim getting out of the bunch. I like that. Going down the goal line. We know it gets stingy down here. Let's see how Tweez's red zone defense is looking. He has two yards to protect. Gonna hold the door or what, Tweez? Goal line formation. Goes to the fullback. Let's go. And Madden Fight. with a touchdown in Madden. And look at that. There's some emotion right there for Mike Skim. He knows he's one game away from making his fourth championship game, punching his spot into the ultimate league. Going for the glory, the guac, and fight, possibly most fight, important fight, fight. for him, that second belt. No one's ever won second belt in this modern MCS era. It was Madden who actually on the opening kickoff couldn't chase down Richardson when Tweez took it's it back 109 on, yards. No this time gets Russ. in on the no ground. Beat, make, me beat him. make him beat me in the air. You beat me in the air, you win the game, good job. Good game. You hear That's Skimbo. Don't let him beat you on the ground. Wow. And that's, he beat you in the air. Good game to him. He deserves to be in the finals. Wow. Skimbo just telling the game plan right out there. <laughs> Putting it out there. And it's very Can't accurate. Because Tweed, like we said, he's been running the ball very well. He's been scrambling with Russell Wilson all tournament. Skimbo said, you he know what? Air, You're not going to beat me it. like that. Let's see what he does to stop it. See if Tweeds can adjust to what he's doing as well. Tweeds only has 73 yards in this game. All there we go. Mostly we go. on the Come ground. On. Throw the ball. See, I don't like Tweeds going to this strong twin because I, I know Skimbo knows I know you got that he's just going that. for the stretch. At least when he's in a single back spread, he has a variety of plays. Yeah, I like him back in this formation right here, Coltrane. This is going to be harder for Skimbo to defend. Baiting him to throw it because he knows an interception would be everything. And there's Russell Wilson out to the 43. Oh, the, the thing that Skimbo has going for him here is he's got a four-point lead. I was just going to say that, Scott. That's a very, very good assessment. Oh, so man. the field goal, it helps, but it doesn't I'll get you the you lead. Go. You need to get in for seven if you want to take back all of all of the momentum in this game, if you tweeze. 60 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm lurking with you. This is Tweeze with the ball I'm spread formation once again out of this West Coast playbook. And he throws it low to Doug fine, Baldwin. You know how those low points work. They're going to throw one back. You know they're going to throw one back. You know that, too. I've done it, too. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, that was this, great. We both know how this game works. I love the interaction between the two players here at the Madden Classic. Controlling them a little bit. Getting in his head, but Thomas Rawls will spin his way after the first contact to the 41. 
in plus territory. Almost like Skim was like, hey, you know how those work. He might overthrow one. It's going to be inaccurate eventually. Tweeds kind of gave him a look like, you're right. Still going to do it anyway. <laughs> Yo, I really kick him. I always kick to the sideline. I kick one down the middle, though. That's crazy. I don't know why you're thinking <laughs> about something that happened in the first quarter, Skim. You better focus at the task at hand. Me. Uncharacteristic. And that's what he's thinking. And, you know, without that, he's ho he's held his offense to three points. It's that special team. The opening kickoff of this game that gave Tweez his first seven points. Wilson, this is Doug Baldwin to get it. Baldwin, it's all right. come on! It's all right. Down to this the is tough. It's hard to score right here. Show me something. <laughs> wow, what a heavyweight slugfest. I ain't seen you play. You probably fest. got a hot one, though. Of course, Doug Baldwin and Richard Sherman, for me right here, both former Stanford Cardinal. I ain't seen it, though. I got to see it. This time, it's Dougie Fresh down to the 11-yard line. Wow. Hey, Skim, you got to be ready for the stretch right here. Hands it off to Thomas Rawls. You see what Skim does with his run defense is he takes those safeties, Earl and Kim, and he one. moves them down into the box and clicks off them it, right bro. when you snap the ball. So the AI is allowed to shoot the gap for him and make the tackle. Not a lot of people play run defense, defense like that. That's a Skim special. Please take it to time off the clock. Here's Wilson. Russell. No problem. Give him takes it to the five. I hit him. Come on, man, that's a hit stick. Oh, that was risky right there by Tweez. Russell Wilson can cough the ball up in that situation. It's not 100%, but there was definitely a chance he could have fumbled right there. Third and four. Got to be more careful with your Tweez. Big play here, Coltrane. Trailing by four, he needs Watch to get some pay dirt. Watch and he will run with no! Wilson. What a play call. Come on, man. What a play call, Coltrane. He what ran that. Mean? So bad. Let's go. So bad. His what a play call. He, he ran that same play in a similar situation in El Paso, and it was the same result. What a way to keep something in your back pocket. That's a dot run right there. We usually say dot on the pass. That's a dot on the run right there by Tweez. Come on, give me my return. Run back. dot. Let me get one. Let Skimbo me get one. Talking to some mad magic. Just one. Gave up a long kick return. Now he's hoping maybe Lockett can get him free. Has some room, but only gets out to the 30-yard line. He can tie this game with a field goal. He's going to need about 50 yards to do so. If anyone's built to do it, it's Mike Skim. But, man, Can't that boy, it over. Yo, know, Tweez looks motivated. He's been playing with a special kind of fire this entire tournament. What a game. Did not turn the ball over here. He'll hand it nope. off to Thomas Rawls and Whoa, Michael up, Bennett. Man. Come on. Make the stop. Second and eight after the two-yard game. Look at the focus of both those players right there on your screen. It's dead serious right now, Coltrane. 2.30 to go in this one. Winner will be in the finals of the Madden Classic. And there is Lockett twisting his way to the 48. Expects him to take his time on the drive. He's going to get him, try to get into field goal range, slow the game down, make this the last possession, worst case scenario, tie ball game, best case scenario for him. He gets the win as long as he doesn't turn the ball over. It's a play off before the two minute warning, and Rawls will get into plus territory. In second and seven. I would say he needs about another 14 yards. And it would still take a heck of a field goal from there. And he could get iced. This is ice territory. That's a good point as well. Russell Wilson with a throw to the flats. Rawls makes a man miss. Boy, it's going to depend on the spot here at the 42. And it is just shy third and inches. Oh, that's big. And he runs hurry up here. Remember, he didn't get the first down on the base. And that's a good time out there by Tweez. And I think the reason he ran hurry up is he knows Tweez wasn't really in the 3-4 there. Now he gets back in the 3-4. Dubby blew up Skimbo's base on third and inches in the game. Skim lost. Let's see if Tweez can do it. Nope. Thomas Rawls from Central Michigan makes his way to the 39-yard line. You know where everyone went to college, man. What a beast. And you can cut the tension with a knife up at that couch right now. It is intense in here, Scott. 
80 seconds left in this one. Skimbo on the edge of field goal territory now. Rawls with 10 rushes for 54 yards. This is going, this is going to come down to the wire. Second and seven. Back to the flats. Jimmy Graham has been open all game, and now he's down to the 30. And there is Dubby looking on, seeing if his guy Skimbo can make it to the finals. The other competitor in this tournament trying to chase a second belt, Dub Dot Dubby. He'll be playing next. That Skimbo was the overall Madden champion last year. Dubby was the Madden Bowl champion. Beat Skimbo to get to the finals where he played problem in one of the most epic games we've seen in the last three years. And there is Thomas Rawls now in the red zone. Two timeouts each for him now. How clutch is Mike Skimbo? Is he really going to pull this off again? Cannot turn the ball over. You turn it over in the game. We'll go to Tweez. Let's we'll see if Tweez decides to... Look at that face. Focus, young Trey Horn. Does he dial up the pressure? Does he play coverage here? Goes to Rawls. And Rawls will lose a yard. And there's a timeout by Skimbo. So 23 seconds, one timeout for Michael Skimbo. That's a good point you bring up about dialing up the pressure. He said he wanted to scream at Skimbo. Unfortunately, Skimbo's just been getting the ball off quick and running the ball, not really giving him a chance to send the goons. Keeps Jimmy Graham in the block, and Russell Wilson gets tripped. Tripped over his own guy, and now it's third and 11, and Tweez calls a timeout. If you're skim, you're going up against the Seahawks right now. They're known to, you know, beat ball hawks. That's the Legion of Boom. You got to make sure you don't turn the ball over here. You might want to just play it safe and play for the field goal. It's a scary territory right now if you might skim. Third and 11 at the 20 yard line. It's a tough decision he has to make right here, Coltrane. Got to get to the nine for a fresh shut of down. So he only has one timeout. Here comes the pressure. He gets away. Oh! He's not able to get the. I tried. I tried to get down. And he tried and they got to you. You call a timeout with nine would seconds. Do. I'm asking you because you would know better than me. I don't want to put you on the spot here, but that cost him a chance to ice Skimbo. And we have a tie game here in the semifinals. And the question is, can that guy return? He returned the opening kickoff. Can we, he return the final kickoff in regulation? And, and to answer your question, I think that's why he called the timeout. He'd rather, instead of the ice, assuming Skimbo's veteran enough where he can kick that, he wants to give himself a chance to return it here and make something happen. And instead, he just signs it up. Did you see what's a little chippy kick over to Madden? Yes, exactly. Of the deep. chip kick. That, that was a very veteran move by Skim. He didn't kick it too short, but not too deep. Kind of right in the middle of that kick return team. Gets it to the fullback. Doesn't give Tweez a chance to have a big return. You know, he told me, you kick it deep and head to head. You might kick it short and salary cap. And that's the end of regulation. We are wow. going right into overtime. A little... Free Madden here in the semifinals. Wow, as you would say, are you not entertained? <laughs> this is what competitive gaming's all about. This is our first overtime period of the Madden Classic. And the coin toss. It all comes down to this, an overtime. Let's crib Go this Skimbo's let's way. Here. So let's Skimbo get out of here. Come on. can take this. He's let's saying if I can crib this kickoff, it's over. He's got a chance. He kicked it straight. All right. Lock right, it. No one wants the block. Cool. Now go run backwards in my end zone. <laughs> the good craftsman never blames his tools. That's him. He just, he, you know, the pressure's getting him a little bit. He knows what's on the line. This is to get to the finals of the Madden Classic, punch your ticket into that ultimate league, and continue your chase for that second belt. And that's why you talk about a lot of the newcomers. It's great for them to get here. But for Michael Skimbo, anything short of a belt is a failure in his mind. Absolutely. And that's how that's exactly what he'll tell you. He does he feels he's a professional. This is what he does full time. And the same thing goes for a problem right, serious mo. Yeah. Dubby, if 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 you know Beast Mode Mac is here, if they're not winning 
you know, a belt. It's and you would think, hey, that's the mentality everyone has, but it's not. No. You heard Chaos say it earlier. He was just happy to, you know, get out of the groups and play with house money. But there's other guys. They're not. They get to that level. They're not satisfied unless they go home with all the glory and all the cash. First and ten here now. New set of downs. Don't even worry about the clock. Late throw in the flats. It will gain him two yards. That'll make it second and eight for Skimbo. Yeah, this is playoff rules in overtime. This game will not end in a tie. They will just go directly to another overtime. Bunch to the left, lock it to the right. Wilson in the gun. The pocket. Has time and has Lockett. Yes, yes. And Tyler Lockett to the 36-yard line. He's been huge for Skimbo. Yeah, good, good pocket hand, followed boy. by a throw to Lockett. He didn't boy. drop it. You busting rhymes over there? Mike Skimbo getting it popping. First and 10. It's going to be very close to the line to gain, and they will give him a first down. He's at the 26-yard line. He's in field goal range. Touchdown will win it. A field goal would give Tweez the opportunity to get it back. Goes back to Thomas Rawls. Yeah. To the outside. But break it! Break it! Give me something! And even if that clock runs out and Skimbo was to kick a field goal with no time left, the way the game works is Tweez would still have another chance. Yes. He would still get his possession. Touchdown would propel Skimbo to the finals. Rawls. Jukes back and goes nowhere. This is big here, Coltrane. This is a big third and four. Tweez is saying one time. The focus of Tweez. I, he only the, he only shows emotion when something goes good. Tweez has kept this composure fantastic throughout this tournament. Play action. The defense. That's really good defense. Playmakers are up, and there's Dougie Sullivan. Let's go. Wow, look at the emotion. Good game, boy. And Skimbo in the finals of the Madden Classic in an epic. Take a look at it again. The playmaker to Doug Baldwin. And Dougie Fresh has moved Skimbo to the finals. Oh my goodness, that's a man on a mission. Look at him. Stops the celebration to say good game to Tweez. He deserves it. Tweez really made a name for himself. What a competitor. But the story right now is Mike Skimbo in his fourth championship game, punching his way to the Ultimate League. Man, he's becoming a living legend. <laughs> you know, I put my hand on you, man. That was wild. I'm sorry. This is good stuff. <laughs> well... <sighs> Yeah, not the way that maybe Skimbo drew it up to happen there in overtime, but some big-time Madden for Skimbo. Wow. You said it. Wow. <laughs> Let's go to Adrian down there with Skimbo. Skimbo, that was an incredible win you just pulled out. How do you feel? I feel great. That was the best game I've played all year. Like, started off a little, you know, bad for me with the crib. You know, I never kick it down the middle. That was my fault, but you know, I feel great. That Tweez is one of the best players I've played, like probably the best player I've played all year. And things got a little dicey there for a while, 17-17, going into overtime. How worried were you that this was not going to pull out a win for you? I was worried because I played his homeboy named Bam, like, all the time. He used to just skunk me with that defense. Honestly, I mean, if it wasn't for him, I probably don't get this win because I knew exactly what that defense, like, what they want to do out of it with the deep blue in the middle. And honestly, those refs versus boys, I'm sure he's going to go and tell Bam, you know, blah, blah, blah. But shout out to Bam. And you have a little time to regroup now before you head into the finals. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to watch this next game, you know. Uh, you know, I got to go for my guy, Dubby. Uh, you know, that'd be awesome if we made a finals together. Uh, that'd be sweet. But I'm just going to study the game closely. But I know both players. It's not like I need to go watch game film with them. Like, I'm ready to go versus them. And it just feels great to be back in another finals. Like, uh, it's unbelievable. Congrats again and best of luck moving on. Thank you. Back to you, Dave and Rico. Thank you, Adrian. Rico.